Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very provocative situation with North Korea. And of course, the emergency meeting held at the United Nations Security Council here only just hours ago. Nikki Haley uh, addressing this body here about the severe dangers that North Korea is doing. And of course, uh, as she states here, they are begging for a war. I want to share with you just briefly some of her comments here, and then we're going to talk about how Russia is viewing uh, this particular issue with North Korea and the escalation of tensions between North Korea and the United States and all those, uh, those that are involved with this runaway situation. Let's first listen to Nikki Haley here. Outlaw nations who seek nuclear weapons choose to conduct themselves in the future. The stakes could not be higher. The urgency is now. 24 years of half measures and failed talks is enough. Thank you. Certainly enough. And of course, uh, Nikki Haley, as we stated though already, has said that there was, uh, uh, that, that the leader Kim Jong-un is begging for a war in one of her comments about this. And uh, we did some very deep research on this all morning here, trying to put together a, an article about this. Uh, from the standpoint of how the Russian politicians, different diplomats, etc., are looking at, at the situation with North Korea and the tensions as they rise with the United States and a possible military conflict in this part of the world. The only problem is, as we begin to put this together, a strange thing happened to our own computer that we use to run our news with here. We began to get no monitor feed whatsoever, uh, trying to get it resolved, tried everything we could think of that would work, and then suddenly, uh, wrong click, and we ended up with a totally black screen, could not get back to the information that we had to share with you. Luckily, though, after we had done some translation work there, we had printed out in English about this news, news that we were looking at, and of course, it's very difficult to find in the Russian language. Uh, we do not use Google when we're doing these searches here. But we do have the titles of the articles in English, one of those being from World News Russia and the other one uh, being from uh, uh, www.vz, excuse me, dot .vz, letter V as in Victor, Z as in Zebra, dot .ru. Both these articles very enlightening about the way Russia perceives this threat uh, in North Korea. Let's go to the first article here. Russia reacts to DPRK's test of the hydrogen bomb. And as we already know, this hydrogen bomb caused two earthquakes on Sunday. Uh, one I think was about a 5.7, the other one I think a 6.2. But it says here in the article, North Korea is actively provoked by U.S. and South Korea by its saber rattling. The Russian politician believes. That's the Russian politician that was speaking uh, in this article here, they were quoting, says, Moscow believes that despite Pyongyang's tests, it is impossible to resolve the North Korean crisis by force. This was stated by the head of the State Duma Committee Foreign Relations, Leo, Leonid uh, Slutsky, RIA Novosti, had reported this. I want to stress once again that North Korea's problem has no force solution. It's an axiom in this case. The world community should not allow a military scenario uh, he goes on to state in the region in, in any case, and all of which can lead to irre, uh, irreparable and most sad consequences for the entire planet. I mean, that's obvious that Russia realizes this could turn into a global conflict. Well, let's look what else they say. According to him, North Korea was pushed by the actions of the United States and South Korea to test nuclear weapons. North Korea, having tested the hydrogen bomb, rudely violated all recent uh, resolutions in the UN Security Council and once again sent an unambiguous message to the West. However, uh, we cannot but admit that Pyongyang is actively provoked by such a line by the US and South Korea with its saber rattling and unceasing threats of military intervention and preventive strikes. Slutsky expressed his opinion. Now, I will say one thing, uh, North Korea probably would not have this technology if it wasn't for the kindness of President Bill Clinton and, of course, later his wife Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State under, under uh, President Obama and, of course, uh, even going back to the Bush administration. Uh, also, in the uh, article here, 
as we go on, I want to go into the next article here from www.vz.ru. North Korea has become a real threat, not only for the West, but also for Russia. Imagine that kind of statement. Now Russia's saying that North Korea poses a threat for them? Well, you know, like yourself, just from the title of it, it seems like they might be a bit worried about North Korea lobbing, lobbing nuclear bombs towards Russia. Yes and no. Watch what is about to be said here. The DPR declared a successful hydrogen bomb test. According to expert, it outnumbered the one that was dropped by the Americans on Hiroshima, a number of observers showing gloating, but to rejoice that the Koreans have wiped the nose of the U.S. and Western Europe is premature. Among the victims of the consequences of this action will be Russia, they noted. The chiefs of staffs of the United States and South Korea have already agreed to prepare and implement military response measures against the DPRK. All right. Indeed, on Sunday night in the DPRK, that magnitude that was first was 5.6, followed by a 6.4 magnitude earthquake there. Uh, also in the article, he goes on to say, say here, according to the preliminary estimates, it was a 70 kiloton bomb. This is three times more than the power of the atomic bomb dropped in 1945 on Hiroshima. So this is one reason why Nikki Haley is saying that he's begging for a war. But you know, when you're sitting there and you're taunting uh, your adversary constantly, it's pretty much, that's he's just trying to show that He's the man on the block. But as I've stated many times before, North Korea no doubt continues to provoke that, not even in the slightest trying to resolve the issue with dialogue as far as what we can see ourselves here. Goes on in the article here, says President of the United States Donald Trump reacted to the news not too quickly, but when he wrote in Twitter that the DPRK actions are very hostile and dangerous for the United States and North Korea is an outcast country that has become a big threat to China, which is trying to help, but with little success. South Korea already understands that the negotiations with North Korea will not help Pyongyang, understand, under, and Pyongyang understands only one thing. Well, the president doesn't actually say what that is, and I don't quite think that Twitter is really the place to express a head of a state in what he thinks it should be done. Um, can't say that it's not a bad idea to say it on the news there, but at least maybe do it in more of an appropriate forum there. Uh, going on, though, it says strict statements followed from Russia. Uh, that was after several other heads of state responded, Angela Merkel and French president calling on more sanctions in the region. Uh, Frederica Marini uh, said that the European Union considers the nuclear test of the DPRK threat to international security. So the entire world is coming against them. And the only one that's really stood by them thus far is Russia and, of course, China. China also saying that they would retaliate if the United States did a preemptive strike. Uh, but if North Korea struck the U.S. mainland, China would not react if the U.S. strikes. But you've got to remember, Russia's concerned, though, because of those nuclear weapons coming on their doorstep. Article goes on to say strict, uh, strict statements followed from Russia. Pyongyang crossed the line saying deputy head of the Federation uh, Committee on Security and Defense, Frank Glinsbeck, if earlier it was a pick which could hardly lead to any serious conflicts, the tests that have passed today are a provocation on the part of North Korea. This is already really serious, said the senator who is quoted by RT. A number of Western media do not rule out that Pyongyang is once again bluffing, but experts do not share the optimism. Not at this point anyway. The statement uh, of the DPRK on the successful testing of the hydrogen bomb is very believable. Professor Andre Lankov, a professor at the University of uh, Kunming, Seoul, told a newspaper in a look, uh, in a look, the Koreans stubbornly worked to create a thermonuclear weapon. He recalled they have need, a need politically and military, as well as technically capabilities, equipment, spe uh, specialists, and money. At the same time, the possibilities of the military response announced by Washington and Seoul are very limited, stress Lankov. This is not Syria, where you can send a punitive operation and bomb someone, he notes. Uh, any military option against the DPRK is guaranteed to cause a powerful blow to Seoul. Doesn't seem like America's much worried about the loss of life and soul, but yes, definitely on the mainland U.S. 
They go on to write, write in here, in conditions of such a serious war, there will be great sacrifices, including among Americans. And given the presence of the DPRK, any nuclear weapons, any means of delivery, it cannot be ruled out that the DPRK will use these weapons, including against American targets, which would be catastrophic even for Americans, whether it be our military soldiers in Guam, Japan, or any of the other close locations, according, of course, Seoul, South Korea as well. In Washington, warning the speech is most likely about increasing military readiness and U.S. military presence in the region, as well as a return of American tactical nuclear weapons to the Korean Peninsula. It was exported, of course, in the early 90s. And that's where Russia is getting a bit concerned, is those nuclear weapons returning to the island there. And this is one reason why we wanted to search see how Russia is thinking when it comes to North Korea and the U.S.'s involvement and the U.S.'s possibility of taking out this tiny nation. Watch what they say here. The most serious blow in the history of nuclear non-proliferation regime has been inflicted, and Russia, being a nuclear power, gets huge privileges because of the existence of this regime. Today is North Korea, and who is it tomorrow? Who is the day after tomorrow? Or sooner or later, nuclear countries will acquire countries whose relations with Russia will be the same as with current Georgia or Ukraine. He did not rule out, in addition, the more nuclear weapons on the planet, the more likely the technology will fall into the hands of the terrorists and, of course, other outsiders, the great, greater the likelihood of accidental unauthorized, unauthorized launch. But the main thing is that after that it will be utterly useless to seek a reduction of the American presence in the Far East. The expert warned for him now will act as the most determined manner, not only Washington, but also South Koreans. The deployment of large number of U.S. air defense systems, which are still aimed against North Korea, but in the future can be used to neutralize Russia's nuclear potential, is a matter of time, he concluded. Now, this is one reason why Russia considers North Korea more of a threat. But it's not just the fact that America is moving their own military prowess in the, in the region there and the power that they have to inflict and to take out Russia's nuclear capability in the future on the East Coast there, but it's also another interesting possibility. Another article here called Russia Should Not Be Drawn Into Persecution of North Korea. This was done here today on the 4th of September 2017 says the DPRK declared successful testing of the hydrogen bomb, which is fully confirmed by Russian foreign experts. North Korean scientists have successfully tested a hydrogen warhead intended for equipping intercontinental ballistic missiles. A leading North Korean state television said in a lively and cheerful voice. By the way, behind her, and I want to share with you the very picture he's talking about here. Behind her... Uh, the background on which she stands, pictures, is very similar to the uh, contours of Yellowstone. What is it for? A hint? Or just coincidence? This is what Russia noticed here. And let me kind of blow this up for you guys so you can see this better on your screen as well there. Uh, but they're right about this. It does look a little bit eerily similar to that of Yellowstone National Park and some of the regions there. So why is it that they chose this background? Well, the Russians actually noticed that themselves and they were commenting on that as well. Now, here's what gets interesting though. Uh, Sergey Lavrov, well, before I get into this other issue here, Sergey Lavrov also issued a statement about it. it. says the first step is to make someone who is smarter and stronger, and there can be no doubt who, this, uh, who in this pair it is, whether it be the United States or North Korea, has such qualities. Washington, regardless of who at the, is at the helm, Obama or Trump, demonstrates the qualities for removed from, from the mind the main threat of the unleashing war expressed by the reluctance to negotiate with Pyongyang and threats against it comes from the United States. This is indisputable fact. To this, the features of Trump's personality, whose actions, as they state here, are unpredictable, are not always based on logic and common sense. However, it is tempting for him uh, for, uh, the scenario of increasing his low rating in the U.S. by another victorious Pentagon war. Kind of like Bush did back when uh, he was president. He certainly soared his ratings when he went to war with Iraq. A war that was certainly unjustifiable uh, at least we never have the facts proven to us as they claim to be. But here comes the other issue that Russia considers the threat. This is what got my attention here. So the deputy head of the Federation Council's Committee on Secretary of Defense, Frank uh, Klinstoff, 
made the following statement. Pyongyang once, uh, who announced a successful hydrogen bomb test across the line. And he kind of joins in with the U.S. when it comes to that. But then we go down. There are known prophecies. This is a news channel. You know, I can't say it's just like mine because it's a regular news station that put this out. But says there are known prophecies about yellow danger. For Russia comes from the east, a great nuclear war. Prophecies as, as known are that, that that and prophecies that can come true but can and not. Prophecies are given for edification, for warning, and for comprehension, for understanding and action. I was blown away to see a Russian news source actually speaking about prophecy like we do here on Israeli News Live. But they were. Listen to what he says here. In general, the yellow invasion has always been associated with China. In the last decade, it became clear that China, uh, at least for the next half century, does not present such a threat to Russia, rather Korea. And then not in the understanding that North Korea directly threatens Russia, but in the sense that Russia, Russia's ill-conceived actions toward Korea can lead to a yellow disaster. And this is why Russia has sided so much with China in the issue when it comes to North Korea and not helping out Trump in this particular situation. They go on to actually speak about that Russia has intentionally stayed out of this because of prophecy that they have gotten from many of their Russian Orthodox leaders. I'm going to just share a couple of them with you. I thought they were kind of interesting. There's many of them out there as I looked them up. Japan and America will go underwater together. Now, think about that one. That's one of their prophecies. Japan and America will go underwater together. There will be a war in Russia from the West, the Germans, and from the East, the Chinese. This is why they're a bit skeptical of going against China right now. They don't want a war with China. Another one, the war between Russia and Germany will begin through Serbia. It's a possibility that could be so as the way we see things lining up over in Europe right now. Everything will be on fire. Great sorrow is coming, but Russia will not perish in the fire. Some of the prophecies show that Russia though, takes a severe beating in the next world war. Uh, it says also Belarus will suffer greatly. Only the Belarus will unite with Russia, but Ukraine at the same time will not unite with us. And then a lot more. Uh, it's actually a Russian word I don't quite understand. So I'll have to drop that right there. But that's kind of interesting as well because Belarus has united with Russia and Ukraine did not. Now this prophecy I think was given back in uh, uh, the 90s on that particular prophecy there. And that has come to fruition in uh back a few years back. The Turks will again fight the Greeks. Russia will help the Greeks. And another one here says, now, no, there will be a war. There will be war here and here, war and there war. And then the warring countries decide to choose one common ruler. This cannot be uh, participated. After all, this one ruler is the Antichrist. Can you imagine a Russian news station they're doing the same thing we do, looking at prophetic things. Of course, now we look at the biblical prophets, not so much modern day prophets. Uh, it is necessary to ensure such a state of affairs when even the darkest dreams of the Koreans will not be tempted to send their warheads towards Russia or carry out other hostile actions against it. It is necessary to distance ourselves from the U.S. and, and the rest of the civilized world from their statements about North Korea to Russia should not be drawn into the persecution of North Korea. This is what they're stating right there. Uh, also goes on to state one last thing here on this article. North Korean scientists have success. Oh, I've already talked about that. Sorry about that. So we've already gone there. One last thing I want to share with you before we end our broadcast here today. This particular article right here uh, on this particular newscast. Very, very alarming here uh, that this comes out from Russian television. Uh, this is on TV1.ru. Uh, that there, I'll kind of play a little bit this so you can hear this in the background. Well, I don't know if I have the volume on this for you guys, but uh, for those of you that can actually uh, speak Russian, so you can hear this as well. Uh, it is a troubling situation. Now, we had shared with you how that there was one uh, article that had came out suggesting that Ukrainians had given the rockets used for the ballistic missiles to North Korea. 
Now we're finding out Russian television is now saying that the North Korea is selling technology to Ukraine. So there's definitely a cooperation between the two nations from what we can see right here. And this is exactly what Russia is fearing is that what North Korea is doing, this is only going to go from one state to the next. They also mentioned Ukraine in the article. Uh, I don't know if they had any idea that this was coming out here. Uh, but they brought out what's going on there. We see what else is coming out. Uh, they're expecting the Middle East, other rogue nations, ISIS perhaps, perhaps could get a hold of another nuclear weapon, and this could be disastrous consequences, no doubt. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Certainly, Daniel's prophecy, chapter 11, verse 44, tidings out of the East, now the North, will trouble him. I'm going to talk to you later today, though, about the prophecy just above that in Daniel, where he has power over the treasures of gold and silver and all the precious things of Egypt, you're going to be amazed to find out prophetically exactly what the West is doing. And maybe not just the West, they're all capitalizing on the technology of the ancient Egyptians and their priests and trying to use this to see what's going to happen in the future. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.